Rohan, you're in the Bronx chasing the story of a man that might be called another prisoner on Rikers Island. Tell us about it. Guys, this is Pedro Hernandez. He's currently incarcerated at Rikers Island. In 2016, when he was 16 years old, he was charged with firing a gun into a crowd in the Morrisania section of South Bronx. The incident occurred in September of 2015. One teenager was shot in the leg. Pedro has vehemently maintained his innocence since the day he was arrested. Now, initially, eyewitnesses allegedly told investigators that Pedro was in fact the shooter landing him in his cell. Fast forward to today, everything is flipped. It's been reported that at least two eyewitnesses have changed their tune and said that Pedro was in fact not the shooter. Some reportedly claim that they were pressured also by detectives to finger Pedro in the shooting. Now the shooting victim, he has since come forward to say himself that Pedro was not the person who shot him. Even with all of that, Pedro remains in custody, charged, not convicted of any crime. Wednesday, he had a hearing to determine his fate. They got a plea offer, plead guilty, do probation for five years, and if there's no incidents during that time, his record would be wiped clean. Now, Pedro, he turned it down. His mother told me that he would never say he was guilty of something that he did not do. Pedro actually graduated high school through a GED program in Rikers Island. Now, I've confirmed that he actually was offered a full college scholarship from the Posse Foundation, but he cannot accept this scholarship while behind bars. He can get out right now to the tune of $250,000 bail. I came to the Bronx to speak to his mother, Jessica Perez. She's not responded since I got here, but I spoke to her on the phone in detail earlier. Now she started a crowdfunding site, uh, attempting to raise bail money because if Pedro isn't released by September 1st, he loses that scholarship completely. Rohan, there's been a lot of comparisons between Pedro and Khalif Browder, the young man who committed suicide in Rikers after being held for months and months and months after stealing a book bag. What do you think about the comparisons between the two? Pedro's charge is much more violent. And also while Pedro was incarcerated during his first year, he was brutal brutally beaten and that video actually came out and was released and Pedro actually had to spend months recovering from that. The security officer that assaulted him while he was in custody has since been fired and now is being reprimanded by the state of New York. To weigh in on this story, we've got TV journalist Mike Schneider, veteran of a lot of big cases, big stories. What does a case like this say about our justice system? Eyewitness testimony is notoriously unreliable. The jails are filled with people who were put there by eyewitnesses and DNA evidence in many cases have cleared them. The fact that this young man is not willing to take a plea to get out of jail and do probation right now says a lot to me about why he's there. But there were witnesses who initially did describe him as the shooter. Why should their testimony be discounted this much further down the line? I mean, that's why we have an appeals process. Now we have to see the eyewitnesses who have changed their story right now, how they balance out against the others. And a lot of time has passed. I mean, it, it may be that this young man needs a new trial simply to establish the reality of what is right now. It's tough. You have shaky eyewitness accounts. You have him being put in jail where he's beaten. You have the police officer who made the arrests, then getting himself jammed up in this conduct uh, investigation and charges. Just from every angle, this guy has been seemingly- well, hold on, Brian. Yeah. Everything that you said is troubling but none of what you said exonerates him. Publicly, at least, all we have is eyewitness testimony, which is incredibly, as you said, unreliable. So it just has to come down to forensics or ballistics or something, or otherwise, what else do they have on him? I don't know. Mostly, mostly I, put the, I put the blame on the um, police department, on New York Police Department for, for harassing and for putting the charges on me in the first place and saying what they say to the prosecutors and stuff. And then you got the prosecutor who goes on with the case and don't want to believe the truth and just actually keeps the, keeps people in jail for no reason. Um, I'm just a mother um, who fought hard for my son and reached out to many people for help and was um, lucky enough to find people like Carmen Perez, Sean King, um, to teach me that staying quiet is not an option, that when we speak up, we, we get changed, we get things done. So I'll pass it on to my son, Luis Hernandez. Um, so um, basically seeing the situation that my brother was in, I didn't want it to basically like repeat history because she went through it with her brother. So I wasn't gonna allow it to happen with my brother. So talk when closer I, to the mic for me too. Um, yeah. When the situation was happening, like I knew that I had to be a voice for my brother being that we're close in age. He's 18 now, I'm 16. 
we've always been like he's like my right hand man i would say so i knew that he wasn't able to do specific things like he's behind bars and records like he has limited capacity to what he could do so i knew that if i spoke up and if i advocated for him then things could get done and where where is that case at right now the case is dismissed yes the case that he was in rikers for got dismissed he still have one currently charged pending and it was a fight between him and another kid um a and how old is he he's 18 now 18 now and this has been going on for two years two years well now three three started okay when he was 15. and this is in the south bronx right yes and which is uh well documented the uh, precinct issues and the police issues going on in the south bronx right what, what's that officer's name um it's it's different officers but mainly it was officer david terrell david terrell um, right he didn't sign the paperwork of my son's arrest but he was always leading the arrest he was always visiting my building so and that was the officer that was trying to date you at a certain point. Was that a true story or is that, I mean, that's what I read, that he tried to highlight you a few times, <laughs> you wasn't having it, and then things started to happen with your son because you wouldn't date this cop. Yeah. Um, you don't like saying it, but you talk yes, closer like, to the mic. I, I, I try to stay away from that conversation. Why? You know, I'm married. And okay. My husband would get mad. I never told him that. Do that he was an officer. I didn't want my husband to approach an officer. Right. Of course, especially not in the Bronx. So I left it out many. Now you put me in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, you know, not the whole truth. I only said part of it. Yeah. That, yes, he was trying to date me. And when I said no, in front of my own mother, he, he, he told me one day, I'm going to break into you. I don't know what he meant with that. But... The harassment kept going. I would be parked in front of my building. He would pass in the patrol car, stop, just to try to date me. After I came out and spoke a little about that, different mothers came out that actually he did worse to them. So they got in the patrol car with him at a time. And he's and just for the people watching this, he tried to then, because I guess the NYPD started to hear these stories and there was a, tons of complaints against this particular cop, David Terrell, he then tried to claim that the there was racism oh, against yeah. him, right? Wasn't that mm -hmm. a thing? Oh, yes. Lately, he, mm -hmm. he did a, a whole new story saying because he's a black cop, yeah. they turning his the, their back. The police commission is turning the back on him. Now he's trying to play the role of the, the black victim. innocent man. Right. When he put away a lot of black kids mm -hmm. by harassment, when he violated a lot of black now, women's rights. Now, another... Um, so Pedro gets put in Rikers. He's being held with bail, correct? Yes, extremely high bail. How high was his bail? It was two hundred and fifty thousand, but it had a surety. Let's talk close. It was two hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. but it had a surety. What does that mean? Security that if I were to bail him out with a property, the property had to be worth five hundred thousand. So we put together different properties: my sister's property, my mother's, we cars. When we went to bail him out. It was impossible because the properties only reached the 250. That's when we found out we had to come up with 500. Mm -hmm. We put in appeals to lower his bail, but the the district attorney was looking the other way just for him to take the five years. They were offering him five years and probation. The Bronx DA. Yes, it's the Bronx DA. Right, that's the no, way. No, but the literally in no, bed. No, literally, yes. <laughs> no, they had a scandal up in the Bronx. Wasn't they having like sex parties at the <laughs> office recently? Yeah, yes. and drugs too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then one of the D, somebody at the DA was dating the David Terrell dude. And that's a whole story, yes, no, too. Yeah. That was the whole situation. Yes. There was a district attorney in the office that was dating David Terrell. And the head DA, like, they knew that we had lawsuits pending towards the officers. And once they seen that the case got dismissed and, like, this was a real issue, she let her know, like, you cannot have any communication with her. And she said, well, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. But wait, he's married. That's yeah. her boyfriend, but he's a married man as well. So I don't, Yo, I don't know how she goes the, public you know, saying that's my Netflix joint on this? Yeah. <laughs> they don't have this on Law & Order. Saying. I don't think... Yeah. They yeah, I mean, well, we want real reforms that will actually drive down the jail population. So at the very least, that means that, you know, in the Constitution, it says you are innocent. We've interpreted it to say you are innocent until proven guilty, not mm -hmm. you are innocent until proven guilty if you have enough money to post bail. Mm -hmm. So we want bail reform such that the vast majority of people going through the system 
potentially all um, are not only being held in jail just because they don't have money. I ideally, it's an end to money bail at all because the research shows that uh, incarcerating people before their trial does not keep anybody safer. It has no impact on public safety. The vast majority of people that await their trials at home do so without impacting public safety. And people get a little bit shook um, because of some of the narratives that we've been told. But the reality is, no matter what I do, if I'm rich, I will await my trial at home. So it's not about oh, we're setting bail on people because what they did is really bad. It's we're setting bail on people. And no matter what, no matter what you do, if you're rich, you can afford to be out. And if you're poor, you can be in. There's people in upstate New York that are being held in jail on $500 bail. So ideally, it's an end to money bail so that we think of other ways to, to keep communities safe and help people um, return to court and have success in their trials without basically just saying you're in, you're in jail because you're poor. So, so too. I want to ask something before we leave the topic. You said kids get in trouble. 80% of those kids didn't commit the crime. 80% of those kids. Well, I think in general, when I say kids get in trouble is teenagers. Yeah. No. In inner city, suburban, kids are kids, right? They fight. They do some graffiti. They hop a turnstile. But when you live in the city, your punishment is jail your behavior yeah. your, so, your your teenage mischief is like could result in you being in jail for two years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now the problem is we have a lot of kids that are sitting in rikers because they too scared to say who did the crime because if they say who did the crime they they end up dead mm -hmm. so we got to keep in considerate in 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 in, in consideration that most of these kids waiting trial, they being punished for something they didn't do. Yeah, mm -hmm. fact. And, and not only that, they being mentally abused, mm -hmm. physically abused, mm -hmm. not only by taking their freedom away, they, they, they getting hurt in mm -hmm. Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. You understand? Not only my son, I see many kids getting hurt, mm -hmm. come out to the streets, they get put in medications in Rikers Island, mm -hmm. come out to the streets without no medication, now, they go into a psychotic breakdown. They commit a crime. Now they become a criminal. Yeah. Because they, they would put a medication to relax. Now they send to the streets like animals without no health, no medical um, um, warnings. And now, now, now we got a criminal. So if this kid was a good kid, now he turned into a criminal. So they damaging the communities mm -hmm. the, by, by, a lot by, of by having these high bills. So everything falls into the same place. Yeah. And a lot of these know. And attack. I'm innocent. I'm a victim, and the truth will prevail. Speaking to Pix11 by phone, Pedro Hernandez tells us he is the victim here, slashed and stabbed by a group of men. And this surveillance video shows immediately after the attack Sunday morning on Quimby Avenue. Hernandez is the man without a shirt chasing the men. He says attacked him. At one point, you see Hernandez kicking in this apartment door, apparently to get at the men. I was in shock at the fact I couldn't, I couldn't really, like I was dizzy. I was, I was like in, in too much pain. I was beating out a lot. I was cut, I was stabbed. You may remember Hernandez as the poster boy for criminal bail reform. About two years ago, he was accused of attempted murder, and he sat in jail on Rikers while proving his innocence. And charges were later dropped. Now Hernandez is caught up in this. Police arrested the 19-year-old saying he was actually the aggressor. That Hernandez robbed and slashed one of the men that Sunday morning before the men turned on him. He wasn't here to rob anybody. He was here to visit a girl. And they were actually going to go out for breakfast that morning. And she had two male friends that were upstairs, where it turned out to be they were Trinitario gang members. Out of confusion, the two guys left, got in an Uber cab, and drove off. Ten minutes later, came back, and an altercation happened, and they stabbed Pedro. Private investigator Emmanuel Gomez has been working with Hernandez for years and says the NYPD arrested the wrong man again. As a matter of fact, there's video evidence showing the complete opposite. He is the victim. We tried to see the video Gomez is talking about, but he had to serve the bodega owner a subpoena to get it. What does this video show? The video shows Pedro being attacked. 
And after the attack, Hernandez took himself to Jacoby Hospital, and that's where police arrested him. Gomez believes with this new surveillance video we're talking about, the one we hope to see, all charges against Hernandez will be dropped. For now, we're live in the Soundview section of the Bronx. Nicole Johnson, PIX11 News. All right, Nicole, thank you. Momentum. Yes, yeah. So there's a bail reform bill that passed the New York Assembly. Um, Latrice Walker's bill. It's a it's a good bill. It's good policy. It eliminates money bail for all misdemeanors and nonviolent felonies, and then really narrows the amount of people who can be prevented detained, which means like being held without the possibility of bail that passed the assembly um, it has to get through the Senate. But as all things with politics, like what needs to happen is real reform needs to pass. So people need to be um, getting in touch with their elected officials or you can go to New York City's one time poster boy for bail reform was arrested Monday for a shooting near Manhattan's famed St. Patrick's Cathedral over losing a game of three card Monty, according to police. Pedro Hernandez, 23, was charged with attempted murder attempted assault, criminal possession of a weapon and reckless endangerment, cops said. The shooting happened at 4.50 p.m. on August 28 during a game involving two groups under scaffolding on E. 50th Street near Madison Avenue. One of the men won Hernandez's gold chain in the game, but Hernandez wasn't happy about giving up the necklace and demanded it back, a police source said. The winner refused to return the piece of jewelry, at which point Hernandez walked over to a black BMW, grabbed a gun from inside and let off a single shot. The guy started running and then they started chasing each other down the block, a nearby hotel bellman recalled. Everybody started running on the street, mostly tourists and some New Yorkers. The men got into their cars and raced around the block, with a BMW chasing the Mercedes into a nearby parking garage, witnesses said. One man got out of each car and then fought for less than a minute before returning to their vehicles and driving off. A 29-year-old man was seriously injured in the fight. The confrontation was recorded on an iPhone belonging to one of the men at the scene who regularly posts three-card money games on YouTube, the source said. Mike Slater, a witness to the sidewalk shooting, said tensions escalated quickly. I heard the gunshot, said Slater, 51, a homeless computer technician who was loitering nearby. There was a red Mercedes and a black BMW racing east on 50th Street and around the block. Quad. Slater said that after the cars circled the block, they pulled into a parking garage where a fight spilled out onto the street. Two guys came running out, one chasing the other, he recounted. When they came out of the garage, they were hauling ass. The guy being chased dropped something on the ground. The guy doing the chasing picked it up and jumped back into the car and took off like the entire NYPD An arrest was warrant chasing had been for Hernandez, but he evaded authorities until police picked him up Monday, shortly after plans for him to surrender fell through, police sources said. Hernandez, wearing a blue suit, was escorted from the NYPD Midtown North Station House and was awaiting arraignment Monday night. He declined to answer any questions about his arrest. Hernandez became a cause celebre for bail reform after spending a year behind bars because he couldn't make bail on a 2015 shooting charge. Bail was initially set at $250,000, but was reduced to $100,000. He was freed when the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights the Charity Bronx District Attorney's Office dropped the case when a crucial witness stopped cooperating and the victim couldn't identify the gunman. Hernandez has been arrested five times since he was released from Rikers in 2017. He was busted four times for driving with a suspended license and other motor vehicle offenses, authorities said. He was also nabbed for slashing a person during a Bronx robbery in 2019, police said. Hernandez has claimed that he was targeted by police. He previously sued the NYPD on accusations of false arrest. A man is in custody tonight for a midtown shooting last month near St. Patrick's Cathedral. 22-year-old Pedro Hernandez was arrested today in the Bronx. He's accused of firing his gun at a group of men after losing cash in a gold chain during a gambling game on August 28th. No one was injured, but a bullet did strike a car. Investigators say Hernandez has three open gun arrests and was out on bail. He's now facing several charges, including attempted murder and attempted assault. What happened, Mr. Hernandez? What happened, sir? What happened, sir? What happened, sir? What happened, sir? What happened? Last chance, Mr. Hernandez. What happened, sir?
What happened, Mr. Hernandez? Bye-bye, Pedro. Bye-bye, Pedro.